Hey there everyone, today we'll be learning how to paint Sir William the Peacemaker from the Reaper Bones Miniatures line to ultimate level standard. So the first thing we need to do is open the model up, make sure you recycle your packaging. Take a scalpel or a sharp knife and scrape off any casting lines on the model. Make sure you're always cut away from yourself. Finish off with a file just to round off any flat areas you may have made. Get yourself an old desk that you don't mind destroying, or a new desk that you don't mind replacing. Ditto for your clothes. The ultimate level pack comes with a plastic base and a small pot of gravel. Use some super glue to stick into his base and not to your fingers as I did in the first two takes of this stage. Cover the top of his base with glue and then sprinkle the gravel on top. I've mixed in a bit of salt with it here too to fill in any small gaps. First thing to do is base coat the model. It's important not to use spray primers with Reaper Bones miniatures as it tends to react poorly to the plastic. Take some pure black and coat the whole model with this, followed by a 50-50 mix of pure black and honed steel. I've used my airbrush for this, but it's easy to do by hand as well. We want to paint his base with shadowed stone. Pop a bit on your palette, I'm using a bit of plastic card here, but you can use a spare plate. Coat his whole base with shadowed stone, try not to get any on his feet, but don't fret if you do. Next we take linen white and mix it 50-50 with the shadowed stone. Take an old or damaged brush and wipe most of the mixture off on a paper towel. Lightly dry brush this across the base of the model, staying away from his feet to create a natural looking shadow. Finally for his base we'll take a dash more linen white and add it to the previous mix, repeating the process and dry brushing any area not directly under where he is standing. When painting a model to ultimate standard, I like to focus on one colour at a time before moving on, so we'll do his armour first. Take honed steel and pure black. Mix this 75 to 25 on your palette. We'll then use this to layer up his armour, avoiding the shadows where the gunmetal colour from the base coat should form shadows. So there we are, we can see he started to brighten up a bit there. Next we use pure honed steel and repeat the process, concentrating on the upper halves of any curved surfaces, imagining a light source coming from above. Repeat this again with a 50-50 mix of honed steel and filigree silver, which is a lighter colour concentrating on where the armour surfaces come to a sharper point. Repeat this again with pure filigree silver. For the final, final, final highlight we'll use Shining Mithril and use this sparingly to create spot reflections to make it look like his armour has been polished. So that's his armour finished, with a very strong top-down lighting emphasis. Next we'll tackle the leather. Take woodland brown and mix with about 25% pure black. Use this to paint all the leather on the model, his straps, his scabbards and pouches. So there we see all the brown areas have been painted. Next take pure woodland brown and paint over these areas again, avoiding the recesses. I've also left his scabbards in the previous colour to imply that they're wooden or a different kind of leather. 
Mix in a small amount of linen white with the woodland brown, like a 25 to 75 ratio. Paint this on the edges of his straps where there is likely to be natural wear and tear, as leather tends to go lighter when it begins to fray. Finally, just take pure linen white and rather than painting a highlight line, just kind of feather this in patches where his leather will have frayed the most. Now we'll paint his shield. Take shadowed stone and paint the back of his shield and around the chickens on the front, leaving the chickens the base coat silver colour to make them look like embossed metal. Next, paint the lower bare quarter of his shield in a mix of brilliant red with a tiny amount of pure black mixed in to get like a, a dark wine red kind of colour. You may need a couple of coats here to get good coverage. Next, use pure brilliant red and paint the upper two thirds of the square, blending into the previous layer. Mix a little bit of golden yellow into the red and paint the top quarter of the square to get a nice graduation of colour going up the shield. And finish with a line along the upper edge and down the side of 50-50 brilliant red and golden yellow. On the other square, Layer this with the mix that you've just made, which is a nice warm orange colour. Again, you may need a few coats. Progressively, add golden yellow to this and mirror what you've done on the red square, gradually working up to pure golden yellow. Edge highlight this with a thin line of 50-50 linen white and golden yellow. I've also painted some freehand shapes on the shield here. You don't have to do this stage or you can make up your own designs. I went for a heart and a diamond to give them a deck of cards theme. Don't worry about messing up here. Flat areas are easy to paint over and start again. Finally we need to do his face. Base coat this with a 50-50 mix of Fair Shadow and Woodland Brown. Next, take pure Fair Shadow and paint the raised areas of his face, like his nose, cheekbones and chin. Next we take Fair Highlight and paint only the most prominent areas of his face. Take your absolute thinnest brush, paint his mouth red and then paint his teeth and eyes with linen white with a little dot of black for his pupils. Also we've painted the edge of his base black. It's a good idea to varnish your model at this stage. There are many spray and brush on varnishes available on the market. So there we have it, Sir William the Peacemaker painted to ultimate level standard with just 11 paints. Don't forget to like and subscribe and check out our other videos, and we'll see you next time.